righty then. Welcome back to another episode of the AFC podcast. My uh, special guest today is Miss Heather Dunham. No relation to uh, Jeff Dunham, the ventriloquist, but Heather Dunham. Welcome, Heather. You know, it's funny as a lot of people ask if I'm related to Jeff Dunham, and I say yes, because I am related to a Jeff Dunham. Just oh, not yeah. that one Just that I know that of. One. I mean, maybe distantly. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, the name Dunham, where does that hail from? Ireland, I think. Ireland. I'm like 85% Irish. My great grandparents were straight off the boat Kellys. So. Oh, oh, yeah, mine too, actually. But uh, they were part of the Hopkins clan from Mayo. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know too much about my family history. That's just what uh, ancestry tells me. <laughs> and then, and of course, my uh, let's see, my grandmother. She met a Jew, and then uh, they had my mother, and then there was Mary. <laughs> A beautiful story. A beautiful story. And she married an Italian, so it just gets it more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you hail from, Heather? Where uh, where do you call home? I'm from the middle of nowhere, uh, a town with the famous living sign, uh, Canistillo. Now it's very famous. I've run into zero people who are familiar with it. Uh, but <laughs> it, there's nothing within an hour in any direction where I'm from. Um, a mall going to the mall was a big deal. Like that was an hour endeavor to to drive there on days off. It was very exciting. Birthday parties, we'd all get together, and mom, one of the moms would take us to the mall. It was a big deal. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. There's this, there's a college called Alfred. That's the closest thing that sometimes people have heard of, but yeah. Canistillo is the school I went to, and there's um they they spelled out on a hill the word Canistillo in a bunch of pine trees, and that's kind of cool, but no one knows about it still, even though they call it the famous living sign. <laughs> Similar to like the Hollywood attraction, they did their own little uh, uh, perk. Yeah, but the- ours is alive. It's not just a sign. <laughs> it's the trees making up the lettering. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Right. No facts. And I'm sorry, I'm 0 for 3. I haven't heard of any of the three. I haven't heard of the sign. I haven't heard of Alfred unless it's like Alfred, uh, Alfred University from yeah. Iowa. Is oh, it Iowa? Iowa? No. <laughs> no, not <laughs> Iowa. Um, oh, which one's your state? Maybe like New York, but uh, maybe you're a New Yorker. Yeah. Oh, I'm South. Like I grew up in Orange County. Right, right. Oh, no, I'm. I'm, I, I know nothing outside of like New York City, like tourism. Wow. That's that's shameful. And I'm going to I'm, I'm literally going to Albany next week to meet the uh, uh, to meet everyone. Uh, we're doing a field trip through the Chamber of Commerce. So I got invited and uh, it was twenty five bucks where I get a full day of food and tourism at the nice. capital. So I'm going to have to ask about countries. <laughs> well, how far do you think you are from Albany? Maybe five hours i'm on the other side i'm west i'm in buffalo yeah you're closer to buffalo then that place doesn't really get too much like uh, i guess attention from our region you know yeah and it's crazy because like i work there like i'll do a day drive and go down for like a week or a weekend pretty often i'm currently working with uh tina kraus out there i don't know if you've heard of her she's a director um what's she known for I couldn't even tell you. I know what we're working on and I'm not supposed to talk about it yet. So. <laughs> oh, so it's just one of those things. I got Tina Crawford, Tina Crow. Oh, wait a minute. Tina Cruz. Like I, know a net- I know a network that she works for that I'm also not supposed to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the catch 22 is like, I feel like the bigger things like I can't brag about. So. Were you in a uh, mansion of mystery? I was. Aha. You've heard of that? Where how no, I, like, like uh, I had I had your profile uh, pulled up sort of as a reference point. I just assumed like maybe you would have gotten like a uh, a rumor credit, uh like what's coming up because you got a couple of killers of killers, doll face, things like that. A like, bunch of indies. They actually wow, they actually look kind of cool. You played a cannibal uh, woman. <laughs> what's interesting is a lot of the things on that profile are just like I don't know. I feel like they're not my best things. Um, 
what I'm really proud of that, like at least recently, is I was in something called Palette in the Brotherhood. It just won a uh, best web series at Geek Fest in Orlando. And you played Erin. Yes, Elder Erin. She's an elf. She's an elf. That's like a Dungeons and Dragons type of world. Oh, it's actually, you know what? Let's see. It's um, uh, Paladin. The Brotherhood follows two brothers, uh, Yorick and I guess uh, Jace, as they embark on a quest to protect their order from a cult of shadow worshipers. Oh, boy. So what I love about that is like a lot of the things I do, I'm not the audience for, but I am entirely the audience for Paladin, like fantasy nerd stuff. That's exactly exactly what I want to be working in. So. That was a really exciting project for me, and I'm glad that it's doing really well. <laughs> uh, the guy kind of looks a little bit like a young, or like he, he could probably be Bradley Cooper's son. Like he looks like this guy, Colin Aaron, looks very much like a young uh, Bradley Cooper. Colin has become one of my dearest friends, and I'm glad you said that. <laughs> has everybody said the exact same thing, or is like. Uh, no, it's just interesting to get feedback like that. Um. <laughs> I got I mean, well. I don't know, maybe he has gotten it before, but it's nothing that I've talked about before. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very opinionated, and I do like uh, nine times out of ten when we do the podcast, like uh, taking a moment and say, wait, 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 I got to look this up. Let me, let's like, do, let's like, let's not like just throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's why don't we talk about that for a moment? And so he's the one that wrote the whole thing. He's a very good writer. Um, what I love about his story is that it embraces vulnerability. Like his character really struggles throughout the thing to like get magic under his belt because he's just like putting up a wall. Like he's trying to front as like this tough guy and he needs to get in touch with his inner self to be able to own the magic basically. Oh, and so it seems like you got uh, is this your first season? I see that you guys did nine episodes. Yeah, I think uh, season two is on hold until and unless we can get a budget because Colin deserves to have a house rather than keep funding this. <laughs> so this is his baby. Like this is his. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. God bless this guy. Uh, how'd you meet him? His casting call. Everything through backstage or you guys were all local? It was all local. Um, I was actually a fan before I saw the casting. I came across their their channel. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen come through Buffalo. So I just started following. And then I was like, oh my God, they're casting. I, was like, I have to submit. What was cool about um, Aaron's role too, is there were, um, he didn't have any requirements for what Aaron looked like. Like he opened that, like Aaron was a gender neutral name. He was like, I, it can be male, female, and they can look however they want. So it was quite an honor that he picked me because so imagine there was some competition there. <laughs> um, no doubt about it. Uh, you could always ask him just, by the way, how many people did you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he said there were a solid three. There's actually a whole um, behind the scenes thing that he made of why he chose me. So it's actually uh, on my website in the, um, I think there's like a testimonial section. I put that video in there. Oh, so you have like a behind the scenes, like for the DVD type of uh, interview where you talk about the project and talk about you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess he was looking for someone who looked youthful, but like there was something behind it, like wise beyond their years. So I guess that's what set me apart. I don't know. <laughs> Is this sort of like a sub, like a, a like a, an alternative universe to like maybe the Game of Thrones in a similar way? I would compare it more to Lord of the Rings. And that was another thing he said is that I seem to instantly know exactly what he was looking for. And it's because I, I imagined Lord of the Rings elves and that's pretty much what he had in mind too. So that's exactly what I meant, but I did say Game of Thrones, didn't I? <laughs> Damn. Oh. I mean, it's, I, I would compare the magic to the Game of Thrones world. Um, but, and maybe some of the language, like there's definitely some people with, more of the uh, northern dialect um oh really and then yeah some very talented like theater performers were yeah 
<laughs> oh, like a very, it's very Shakespearean where they could actually drop in like an old English accent and just like. And that is not me. That, that's something I would love to work toward, but I'm not there quite yet. Luckily, uh, the elves don't speak like that. So <laughs> do you have you speak in your own language? My own language? Well, like the elvish language from Lord of the Rings. Like I haven't guys. had to, no. Uh, or you just have your own private. I totally language. would if he asked for it, but no, not yet. I think it's available in libraries and Duolingo where you could actually speak Dothraki. You could speak uh, Elvish. You know, it's like, you know, war, a wartime, a wartime language. Right. That would be really fun. Well, we'll see if it ever becomes a priority for my time investment. <laughs> um, are, these, are these the type of roles you really like to kind of stick with? I love fantasy. I mean, I, my character type branches a lot. So the foundation of, the character that I sell is some motivation of love, basically. But I mean, that can take you anywhere. Love is very motivating, you know, can uh, make you do some crazy things, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like what? I've played a uh, I played a serial killer who's in a lesbian triad. <laughs> what? That's that's a first please go on <laughs> it doesn't exist yet but uh it's called wow i'm blanking it's like one of my biggest projects and i can't remember right now <laughs> it's on the up and coming list it has been for years i think that's why it kind of fell off my radar <laughs> are you the water model in that one no all right so it's not a date for anya uh what about ava and infatuation it's not credited yet um uh -huh. Not yet, because you got. It looks like you got three really good ones here, and now like they're all in uh, production. But Ava in Infatuation, that's actually in post production right now. Uh, infatuation exists. Uh, the premiere was like a month ago. I wasn't able to go to it, so I haven't seen that yet. But I hear it's really good. <laughs> well, if you read the script, I'm sure it is. It actually released in January of 23. All right, so this is recent. Well, to be fair, there's been a lot of scripts I read that didn't turn out to be good. <laughs> you mean how they executed it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Indie film, man. Um, gosh. Why can't I think of that? I keep thinking of Allison and the Killjoys, which is a band in the film. <laughs> Are we going back to the lesbian, uh, lesbian series? You know, like bring up, yeah. Like bring up uh, my resume. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be in my resume is the problem. Oh, so you didn't even actually like make a note of it for the public to okay, see. Okay, so the way my mindset works when I do film, like I'm not, I don't watch things. Like I don't, like Lord of the Rings is rare because I watched it. I'm not a spectator of any sort. Like I do things. Like I audition for something and then I forget it exists until they call me back. And then I do the project and then I forget it exists. So... <laughs> You have an outstanding, you, you actually have an outstanding resume here on your website. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, uh, very photogenic, very, like, you got a- West End Girls. I remembered. West End Girls. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of that. But yes, yeah, so it follows Winter, who um, kind of needs to come out of her shell. She has a lot of trauma, a lot of pent-up issues from, like, her parents' death. And she needs to, like... She should be like in therapy, but instead she's like, she only has her brother and she's trying to navigate high school and gets bullied and thinks that she needs to fit in with these other lesbians who apparently think it's fun to kill people. And she has to like impress them and they make her dye her hair. And then when she finally like lets loose, she's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Oh, and okay. So uh, when do we expect to maybe potentially get to see that out in the real world? I don't know. The person editing it needs a new laptop. So whenever he acquires that. <laughs> you got a lot of fun things on your resume. It looks like, like you dyed your hair blue, red, blonde, brunette, more blue. Uh, all these different assortment of characters. So are you in my modeling portfolio? <laughs> I'm on your, I like I'm, I'm listening and I clicked on this button and it actually pulled up your, uh, your bio where it says the becoming of Heather. 
It looks ah yeah. There's a lot of becomings here. Quite becoming at all. Quite quite becoming. In the real section, um, that'll show you some of the the work I've done. Um, and like I have the the titles of the films at the bottom, so you'll know like what goes to what on the resume. But there's uh, also samples of my voice work on there. Um, because that was the first thing I did podcast wise as I started doing these fake ads for the Buffalo You Up podcast, which interviews just like local people in the film scene, kind of like what you're doing, but in Buffalo. But oh, so. then they cut to like fake ads. The idea is, I think, to get real ads and they'd be like, it would be inserted here like this, but we just made our own like bullcrap ones oh, so as they, filler. Were they, oh, so, and also like proving a, a, a pre-existing concept right uh, right Nelson? but i was the one making the fake ads so there's some of those in there they're kind of entertaining i think <laughs> i did click on your reel and uh okay uh so you had the reels up top and uh now you had like modeling and stuff um down down yonder towards the bottom mm -hmm. so like uh I mean, like, uh, I, I love your cute little, like, baby picture holding the umbrella. That is so adorable. Like, uh, were you always sort of, like, uh, playing I dress? I Asian, right? When I was a kid. Oh, like, no. I got, bullied, I got bullied for being Asian, and I am 0% Asian. <laughs> no, like, I think John Mulaney. I couldn't remember. Yeah, it. he like, talked he, about it, and I was like, I feel so seen. <laughs> so, and it's just like, no, I'm... <laughs> I, that and if for those of who have no idea what we're talking about, just uh, look it up on YouTube or TikTok. It's actually quite a funny story, and it's funny when he talks about it. But no, Heather, not at all. You don't. You don't look like. Uh, you don't look Asian at all. You look like this adorable. I didn't bleach my that, hair, so that helps. <laughs> so, like, uh, were you always really interested in, like, you know, uh, the performing arts, or just like kind of like doing experimental stuff? Love photography, love imagery, anything like that. So I've always been affiliated with the arts, like growing up, I did theater, I did dance, I was an artist, I have my artwork right next to me here. <laughs> um, but I went to college for my practical degree in science, and I actually work at Tesla in oh. my company. <laughs> Yo, get those Tesla stocks, baby, let's go, get it. <laughs> I, I have a Model X because of Tesla's stock. But, uh, oh wow good for you no live your life enjoy it i got an electric scooter uh it goes 50 miles an hour and i love it that's cool i recently was on a film where they needed an extra who could ride an electric scooter and i was they were like has anyone ever done this before and i was like i'm sure i could figure it out in five seconds but since like i hadn't before they picked other people but i was so jealous they like they had them cross pads and i just like pictured them jousting like <laughs> <laughs> stupid but uh it's yeah so funny though like, i like have my science degree and my career in science and i'm like what am i going to do in my free time and okay so i'm driving home from work one day and i see a school bus on fire and i'm like <gasps> what is happening and then i saw like all these like cameras and stuff and i was like oh yeah the purge is filming here and i was like you know i have all these headshots lying around from when i was in modeling like photographers approach me quite often for time for print things so like, I'm gonna send a headshot in and see if I can get on this movie and then they said yes and when you're on set for 15 hours with a bunch of actors you end up networking and just I don't think I could get out of it if I wanted to every gig has led to three more so Oh, so basically it was like a Hydra thing where like once you go down that lane, all of a sudden like more keeps popping up, even if you click. Yeah, yeah. But oh, it all bad. started for me in Buffalo anyway with the purge. But I feel like I had the the upbringing to support it once I had the opportunity, you know. There's no wrong way of getting into film, theater in any way, shape or form. I don't think there's a wrong way. The only wrong thing is to not get involved, you know right or to be a jerk <laughs> oh that's uh I, you could if you could be the jerk but i mean it's like yeah it's not gonna I last that, right no it's not it's, far. Yeah, it's not gonna last like you could bring that you could bring that energy anywhere and if you did do it into a dojo or a, a mixed martial arts studio you're gonna get humbled real quick but like people know immediately um especially those who want to do this long term if they're really in this for the long run and uh, I hate to say doing it for the right reasons, because you need to know why you're doing it to begin with. But people are going to people are going to know you. 
you know, and nobody wants to work with somebody that just makes it harder to get through the day. Something that I tell my teams a lot and like it translates to every part of life, really. Um, I tell people that there's no such thing as a work Heather and a home Heather. Like they are the same person. They affect one another. So like, I like to make sure that the teams that work under me, like that they're good. Like, please tell me what is going on in your life and how I can support that so that you can perform well, because like, if you're not being helped, I'm not either. I feel like that translates to film really well and yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Have you only been doing this for now, like maybe at most like two or three years? Uh, I think 2018 is when I jumped back into it. As far as film, like I did theater and dance and like a whole bunch of artistic things growing up, but they were just like, you know, the school hobbies. As well, an adult, yeah, probably 2018 is when I started. Oh, uh, so uh, were you, uh, well, so you got to agree. I mean, you, I don't think you could have a better, like uh, a better day job, but it, does it allow you to actually have some creativity on the side where you create your own stuff? Absolutely. So it's been really hard to like, think about leaving Tesla, no matter like how successful film gets, both because I do have like a passion for science and I'm good at what I do. So I work in reliability testing. I basically, I, I like to sum up what I do by saying I destroy things for science. So. All right. No, that's all. No, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's, uh, it sounds like you could actually make it into a comedy because it seems like you could have a lot of, it could be very playful, but there's. Probably. Like, It'd be hard with being NDA bound. But well, I mean, no, like you don't want it like you could just I don't know, it's science and it's fantasy. Like you can make something up where there's a similarity or a process on why you do what you do, similar to like Mythbusters, like do a Mythbusters type of thing. For sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, it's been a great tool. I'm allowed to like execute more and take advantage of more opportunities than a lot of my peers I've noticed because it allows me to like like I have the PTO to travel when I want to. I have money to invest in classes when I want to. I can invest in really great headshots and the stuff that you see on my website just because I have that career driven background. You know, I feel like a lot of artists are experiencing a lot more of the like starving artist side where they're just like bartending and picking up jobs where they can, but maybe they can't travel because they don't have the means, you know. And then there's fucking Heather in her goddamn jet. <laughs> I don't say jet, but I don't mind a road trip. I can fly if I need to. If it's worth it, I'll fly. But, you know, like anywhere that's drivable in a day, New York City, Atlanta, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. I'm all over there just because my car drives itself. So it's kind of an easy commute. <laughs> Oh, have you taken a back seat where you're just like letting the car literally? <laughs> not drive? a back seat, no. That, oh, it's no. not even legal. I don't feel good about it. I'm like, if there's, if I had to take over, like I, I won't relinquish that much control, you know. But uh, it actually yells at you. You have to have like weight on the steering wheel, and it checks like if it doesn't feel weight every ten seconds. It's like what's going on. It like beeps. Well, can't you put like uh, the, you know, the Dick Sporting Goods sandbags and just like have it dangle right there on the front at People two o'clock? do it and it's illegal and not safe at all, but you could theoretically. I oh, don't. <laughs> I, have yet, I have yet to drive a Tesla. Like I've driven a Lamborghini. Like when I first tried, like my neighbor had one and he's like, Phil, you want to sit in it? And I'm like, yes, I do. And we got to turn it on. I got to literally drive it. And when I say drive it, I don't mean that I took it on the road. I literally just backed it up and pulled it forward, but it counts. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fun experience. Yeah, it sounds it for sure. Yeah, that guy, that guy, David, we used to work out together when I was in high school and he's a pretty, he's not a famous person, but he's done some stuff on reality TV. But, you know, he was always like that personality that you just kind of know from town and I never, I never got into this business like with the intent of anything because it was just more of an accident that just led to bigger things. Cool. But, but uh, I will people. say the car has definitely saved my life a few times. Like it slammed on the brakes for deer that like I would not have reacted to in time. Um, things like that. One time, um, an emergency vehicle decided to throw its lights on like when it was in my blind spot and my car just like pulled over and I'm like, what is happening? And then it like drove by me and I'm like, Oh, interesting. <laughs> actually able to detect color pattern from light. 
it didn't used to be. So there was a case where someone like passed out behind the wheel and the car was driving itself and like a whole bunch of emergency vehicles were following it and they couldn't get it to stop. I don't know how that was resolved, but (laughs) what motivated them to be like, okay, we need it to respond to emergency vehicles and pull over if it's like in autopilot and like there's lights behind it. But yeah, I experienced that. It was, um, I think it was an actual ambulance, but you know, it was just driving normal and I happened to like it hit my blind spot right when it threw its lights on and <laughs> the car's like, I got you, bro. Go right. Me. Right. Have you ever got a chance to meet Elon himself? Define meet. Shake his hand. <laughs> Hi, Heather. How are you? I don't want to be on his radar. There's like a stigma at Tesla that the closer you get to Elon, the more likely you get fired. I know of one person who shook his hand and he got fired the next week. Um <laughs> He has looked through me twice. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, buddy. So t- now is Tesla, like, I he said some really remarkable things about AI, but isn't Tesla's, like, you know, their cars are a form of AI? Yeah, one of the places that is, like, developing the automation is in our plant. Um, it's kind of, I don't think it's a job I would like because it's a lot of desk work, like, It's just like anonymous data that the cars send. And it's like, I didn't know what this was. And you look at it and you're like, that's a stop sign. Here's the edges of it. And you're just like telling all these pictures what they are. And it sounds terrible (laughs) to me. (laughs) I mean, like, uh, I love, I do. I truly love, you know, tech companies. And I'm not, I'm not a researcher by any form of the definition, but um, I'm very product driven when I support like what people do. Uh, for the most part, because, you know, it's self-evident that, you know, they actually do some really awesome stuff. And I forget the name of it. I don't know, like Plug Power was a cool company that worked in commercial vehicles. Uh, They, they did, they, they did some really cool things. But then there's this other company. uh, I do forget their name. It's escaping me, but they had really took a direction on like electric motorcycles or uh, electric tractors and things like that. And like, Heather, please uh, talk to your boss. There's, there is abs- like there is absolutely no reason why you do not have an electric train. There is there is absolutely zero oh. reason. No, there's no reason why we do not have electric trains. Like self Elon says the same money. thing. He entirely undertook the boring company because he was like, someone should do this. I don't have the time, but like do this, and no one did. So he's like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> well, because I literally reached out like to that company. It's like they're, they have these inner relationship with investor or like people relationship uh, gu- dude. And I'm like, okay, you just did like these three things. Yes. I love tractors. I have one, not an electric one, but still I have maybe 70 fucking miles in Orange County, New York of unutilized train tracks that just need a a little bit of repair and just get the grass up. And I would love to have an app that just takes me across town like a fucking elevator with an electric vehicle. And I will subscribe to that for 20 bucks a month or 30 bucks a month. And then literally you have this 1000 mile and 1000 mile battery just doing down and back work. And they like, you have multiple elevators horizontally. There's no reason not to have this. Like, no, like just bring things back to life. I mean, you don't need to have like necessarily the conductor. We have the app. We check in and it'll it'll sense whether or not there's a, a what do you call them? A stowaway or something like that. Like, yeah, we'll take you to where you want to go. But then there's going to be a cop there when you land. So it's not going to like interfere with like our schedule. And there, like, honestly, something like that to bring us from Orange County all the way down to say Secaucus Junction, you know, and then we hightail it across into the city. Or maybe I don't want to drive all the way to Niagara Falls. We still have train tracks all over the state of New York, all over the state of New York that we're just not using. But if I could subway my ass up there and just like, honestly, not pay for the gas, not pay for the tolls. And I could bring my dog on there with me. And it's like literally one giant, it's almost like one giant bus where maybe you can get up to 20 to 30 people at a time. And then if you have to stop at the next stop, you just push it on the app because I'm planning out my trip. I want, I need to get there by X amount of time. So then it it could literally go 
90 miles an hour for like three minutes to make up the time or whatever it does. It's a fuck. It's a horizontal elevator. And that's, I'm going to Albany on, uh, on like earlier next week. And I'm like, there's no reason that we don't have this. None. With you for sure. Um, my, my nowhere town actually exists because of the railroad. My dad, his career was working at also which works on trains. Um, he was a foreman there and got laid off because like as railroads just aren't a priority, they're making cuts. So yeah, that's definitely until someone <laughs> builds the app until, that <laughs> until someone builds the app. We need it. Uh, I'm with you. So I, I can understand like sort of like uh you need a train like maybe conductor and then there's like the supply the demand car versus traffic and all and all this shit i think a train is more essential than anything else um we're just not i don't think it's being uh utilized you know public transit in general could really be revamped pretty much everywhere in america that's the biggest difference between here and like you travel to other countries public transit is so much better like it's reliable it can actually get you places here there's just so many gaps because we all rely on individual cars for some reason well, we I, I got nothing against that in any way shape or form but wouldn't it be kind of cool if you did it's have not accessible like it it's not right. good for low income people it's not good for convenience I don't or know. Phil Tapadora, no income person. I got an electric scooter. That's my transportation. Cause I can't do anything else. Right. I can't, I can get like the insurance payments, the car payments, the loan on top of that, you got to what you got to do pizza delivery just so it pays for itself. But where's your time going? 100%. So I, I, I think there, I think honestly, that's the next thing because we got to have a system when we go to Mars to begin with, where we have a form of transportation and Japan did a brilliant thing where they actually paralleled, I think, uh, their train system to natural uh, fern or fungus on how it actually spread and distributed energy efficiently, where they actually microscopically took the design and applied that to their railroad for efficient traveling. Nice. I don't know if you heard that, but another like. I weird didn't. Like, I, like, I don't like, consume things like I'm not like on. Um... That, like I'm not reading articles I'm, unless like a friend tells me this exists. Like that's how I learn about the world. <laughs> it has to be big way. enough for someone to come tell me. <laughs> yeah, fun, like fungus, uh, you know, it was, just, that was actually a brilliant move. Like how do you do things efficiently? Look to nature, you know? Speaking of nature. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Oh my God. Like, uh, did you ever had a, uh, I don't know, man. Like, have you ever like tried to like, uh, well, like, uh, have you ever tried to invent something and just call it your own? Nah, I've definitely tried to own my own businesses. They weren't through like inventing things. They were more like leadership or investing type things, but not like product development. I'm not a very good idea haver. Like I'm more of a developer. If someone has an idea, like I can be like, okay, this is what we need to do to get it there. But I'm not very good at invention no <laughs> so you're the scientist that actually take like so basically like if walt disney being the imagineer he's like okay here's my idea how does it work you're the person that actually mechanically creates the floating uh mountains of of. of <laughs> if of i was that. skilled in that area yes that would be me <laughs> are you more about the chemistry side or like food you, you could come up with some good recipes of weird tastes terrible at chemistry um <laughs> I don't know. I have a very weird skill set. It's very specific. You blow shit up. <laughs> well, my background's actually zoology. So arguably I'm not very good at blowing shit up either. <laughs> oh, so like you're good with, were you good with animals? I mean, zoology is mostly studying dead things. Like it focuses on evolution and- Oh, I got that wrong. I got how that things wrong. are related to other things. Um. I was totally gonna head in a different direction before that. <laughs> you could you could revert because like I don't I, remember what it was. <laughs> oh, uh, um, Myers Briggs. Are you familiar with Myers Briggs? The like sixteen personality types. Yes, yes, I am. Yes, mine is the logician. Like very logical. Like it's actually typically males are logicians, and very few people in the population are. It was something like. 12% of the population is this type. And they were like, of that percent, like 4% are women. 
I'm like, that's why I feel so alone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Oh my God. Well, chemistry is not your strong suit. So I guess that, you know, it makes sense. Um, I don't know. Like I, I need people to like, tell me when they're joking. <laughs> like I take things very, right, like I'm, I'm constantly, literally. I'm constantly joking. I'm, con- I'm constantly joking and keeping things light. Uh, like, but like inflection's fine. Like if I can tell, like, like people will just like be mean sometimes and I'll be like, is the love there? Like, I, I need you to give me some kind of like sarcastic tone or like, <laughs> or at least give me a high five to kind of go. Right, right. right. Something. We, need, we need like a, like the Tesla, is there a Tesla reset button or is it always on? What do you mean? It's, I was joking. Never mind. Oh, no, what? like, like, yeah. Oh God. I fucked that up. I was, I was making a joke um, where you actually need to like reset. I was just curious, like does Tesla, the car have a reset button or is it just always on? And I was going to create um, a parallel. You can restart it. It is like, you're supposed to probably turn it off every now and then, but who has the time? You have to like sit in the car for five minutes while it reboots itself. I really only do it if I have an issue. Um, yeah. So it's like a safety feature. It will not reset itself. I don't know that it's a safety feature, but just use, it's like a computer, you know, it just stands idle unless you shut it down. Hmm. Has anybody ever said that you look like a very famous actress? I have a solid handful that I've been compared to. It depends on like how I do my makeup, what color my hair is, but why? Who do you think? Well, I just said uh, uh, I saw like your one picture where it did remind me of Phoebe from Friends. Uh, I have gotten her more recently, like for some reason she's, she's come up probably within the last year. That's um, actually an outstanding actress. Uh, she's, she really is outstanding. I'm going to have to look her up, but she was in, uh, she played the mother on Netflix's uh, rendition of Lost in Space. Hmm. I'm actually going to look her up. You almost look exactly, you you look so much like her gotten her when i was um brunette i got jennifer lawrence um i've also gotten amy lee from evanescence before when i was brunette um was the girl the girl who plays gadriel like the young gadriel in the new lord of rings lord of the rings um i did see the new lord of the rings uh, i still have to go back and finish it um which character was that young gadriel i don't young know young gadriel She's like in a suit of armor, like people have sent me pictures and they're like, this is you. And I'm like, I would love that. Thank you. <laughs> so the actress I was talking about, uh, the one outstanding, her name is Molly Parker. Mm-hmm. She's she's actually really, really freaking good. I, I don't think she's done a bad performance, at least not that I've seen. I haven't watched all of her work, uh, but uh, she was in Deadwood, the TV show um for hbo back in like 2004 and i think she was actually in the movie for a minute when they uh did the did the glorious death scene <laughs> did you have a favorite movie fantasy stuff man like all the all i time. love the harry potter films i know that it's like illegal to like them now because you'll get canceled because jk rowling doesn't like trans people but <laughs> I do like the world she created. Um, oh, God almighty. Like, and honestly, like so many things get canceled in the world where, you know, they'll either get picked up by something else or somebody else, or there's going to be the reboot. It's also interesting, like how people pick and choose what they're that passionate about. It's like people will be mad about that while wearing like she in clothing. And I'm like, you realize that was made with like terrible working conditions and a chi- a Chinese factory and like <laughs> like there's there, like there is, no there is a story for everything and if we really did dissect it where we want to go down that road it's a waste of energy you know you got to just I th- I like I'm not going to give anybody feedback that I don't take or unsolicited as they say but it's like uh you got a destiny bro um don't get don't get distracted by other people's ways of life uh, and it's like what can I actually do it's like it's like the I understand the extent of like your money tells people like what can be supported, but I'm like, I don't know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to go change the factory in China, you know, <laughs> like so 
if we had electric is that train, where I want to invest my emotional energy and like is that what I want to care about for the rest of my life like and like it's cool that there are people that pick that like that's their they're like I don't know the thing they want to change in the world and they're passionate about it but it's just not mine I chose environmentalism and that's why I work at Tesla and <laughs> that's my thing I, I don't have the emotional expenditure to want to change everything wrong in the world. I used to be that person and it is very draining. <laughs> well, see, at least you learned from it where it's just like, is it really like, you know, contributing to you, like you, your, your own personal sustainability before you cancel yourself out because you're just burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's um, just an emotional investment, I guess. Have you ever taken like uh, gone to acting school and try to like invest in a certain like craftsmanship for your career? You know what's interesting is I've never taken an acting class. I just do it. <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> I did. I did take one because I felt like I was really bad at improv. So I did take an improv class, which I was still really bad at. It's just I don't know. <laughs> like I, I prefer to have a script and be able to develop a character off of that than like like I said I'm bad at like inventing things pulling things out of the air I'm like I, I probably will never be a live interactive performer because I'm just bad at it I don't know <laughs> so basically you're the you're the doctor in the room you don't you don't do anything unless someone's dying <laughs> well I mean like I just need a plan I don't like, I hmm. I don't know, like the people that do murder mysteries and like interact with guests and have like a different experience every time, like hugely admire that. It is not my skill. <laughs> so, all right, you found your lane. Um, did you find like, uh, here, or do you feel like maybe you're going to be getting typecast uh, from what you've accomplished so far? Or has there been like a few dynamics? I don't think so. I am a very diverse actor. Um, I've played villains. I've played heroes. I've played like the the smart advisor I've played the crazy chick that like psycho killer like I've, I've been all over the place I don't tend to be a side character that's like what they all have in common I don't oh, know. So you, you've, been, you've like been primarily like the leading lady pretty much it might just have to do with like what I apply for but it's also not un uncommon for people to just reach out and they're like I think I have a role for you twice now I've actually had people say that um they put out a casting call hoping that I'd apply and then they were like I actually wrote this because you inspired it and I'm like what really yeah yeah that's dope dude right yeah of course that's awesome it still kind of baffles me. It's <laughs> like, that's wild. Welcome to Happy Corner. This project strives to make safe housing areas for stray cats at an affordable price. It's so easy to put together that even your children could have fun making one. Help keep cats and other animals safe with their own little Happy Corner homes. You can help this project become a reality by donating to the GoFundMe page. Happy Corner homes are a great way to show those animals in need. It's okay to be happy. No, like you, if you're triggering people's imagination and sparking saying, I would love to see them in this and try to work with them on that. Like, uh, what's it like networking in the Buffalo area to expand your uh, uh, filmmakers network? Very good. Like, I feel like Buffalo definitely, at least the people that last have a very, um, there's room for everyone mentality. Like rather than, like there's a few people that like fill my look type. Like I can think of two people that I go to for like, it, it's more convenient than competitive, you know? It's like, okay, well, I can't do this gig because something came up, but I'll pass it to this person because they kind of look like me. We play kind of the same type, like the edgy, I don't know, power girl. I'm like, here's your new blonde because, like, <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's like every film that comes through, we all have our little, groups that we send info to and it's like oh did you hear that this is filming there what are you guys doing this weekend uh, you know it's it's very friendly are oh, you proactive uh, right so like uh how, how's it feel to actually uh you know have the only new york-based football team 
honestly, it doesn't affect me much. There is a film shooting here right now called uh, Unbelievable about the Bills, but I am... I actually auditioned for the lead and or submitted for the lead in that. And the day of auditions, I was getting a surgery. So I didn't end up on that one. Oh, what happened? Like shoulder operation or something? I actually donated my eggs and it was the extraction day. <laughs> oh, so another woman could have a baby? That is so sweet. <laughs> How could like you're never gonna get canceled? You're gonna you might you're gonna be somewhere you don't know down the down the road. <laughs> I try. That is a sweetheart thing to do. It's just like, here you go. I'm going to share. Oh, give up these auditions to make you a baby. Like, <laughs> it's oh. not like it was anything <laughs> changing or anything. I'm just, um, it just happened. Like I, I felt like I was a fit for the lead. They were like, this is the person, a person who like, isn't really into the bills, but their parents are. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I saw your baby and, picture uh, where you're just like, you know, yeah, Buffalo bills, like, you know, like a true, like a true Buffalo Bill fan. My mom I'll, made I'll model for it. I, I like, I like how happy they make other people. So like, it's fun to walk down the hallway at Tesla and be like, go bills. And everyone's like, Woo! <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for these guys to actually just get two Super Bowls in a row. It's only a matter of time. I do know the, you, do you remember how it was a big deal that like Josh Allen got shoveled out by his neighbor? I did. Yeah. I heard the story, but I, I didn't know that neighbor. He's an actor. You know Mark the dude. Gone. What? Yeah. Yo, shout out, Mark. So like, <laughs> Mark like, and Maria, they always slay the film festivals. They're the ones that won the Buffalo Forty Eight. So yeah, like, what's the film? What's the film festival circuit like up upstate New York? There's a few ones that we look forward to every year. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the Forty Eight Hour Film Festival because that's like everywhere. Well, we got them in the Bronx and uh, right, a, right. a couple used to be Buffalo around. Buffalo has that. Um, there's there's one that just became a thing that's called the Valkyrie Film Festival that focuses on women filmmakers. That's actually where Infatuation premiered. Um, so that's an, it seemed like it went over well. I wasn't able to make it to that one, but that was a new one. There's There's a few that I can't remember the name of. But just as far as like films, the the names films. Things. <laughs> like people say them and I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about, but they're like, I'm uh, going to describe a thing and you give me a name. I'm like, no, nah, it'll just <laughs> pop up in your head. Like maybe tomorrow where it's like, yeah. I remember like I did a podcast last week and I just forgot the name Christopher Nolan. And I'm like, but I know, like, I know Batman and Christopher Nolan's work. And it's like, I, I just couldn't, could not at that particular moment remember Buffalo Dreams. I remembered it. There's one called there you Buffalo go. Dreams. I'm uh, like, I've had like three films go through there. Why can't I remember it? <laughs> so like, uh, you know, like I've heard some strange things like how like uh, I remember when I was a kid, my brother was always so curious, like, uh, you know, growing up in our uh, small town uh, where home of Legoland is now in Lego, New York just taken over um he asked me like a you know a child a good kid question that you know i just uh our world was just like our town you know so it's just like how do all these other towns exist uh if they don't have a grocery store or something like that and like well That's not uh, I'm from. <laughs> no, i was just like uh the, it was funny because when the train used to actually come through um uh, specifically you had uh, Chester, Goshen, New York, right around that region, Campbell Hall. Like the train was actually, you know, a primary source of like transportation. We built our schedule around all that stuff. It even went right to the mall. And that's why the mall uh, got built like all the way out in Middletown because the train was right there. It's just like, all right, perfect. Like, he, and he asked a really good question. So I guess like from your area, being like, I guess a little bit isolated. Is there like what you guys are like really known for agriculturally or energy wise, like that made your town? Like it sort was of like, like an all, all stum the train that was like where everyone had their career. Like if your parents worked, they worked at Alstom, unless it was like a random little store. Fun fact, I graduated in a class of 85 after we merged with another school that had a class of 10. And it, it's like a the next store town, but that one, 
the only place of commerce was a vending machine outside the library and they had one stoplight in the entire town. <laughs> it's like Sounds my friend like from there was like, yeah, like the, the hangout was I'll meet you at the soda machine at the library. Like that's what they did. <laughs> no, like small, like small town, like small town stories. Like, uh, you know, you just kind of like, you make your way and it's just like a hidden gem. Like, uh, you ever see poker face on Peacock? It's actually really, actually, uh, I did, I binge watched the show. I actually really, I'm not going to say I fell in love with it. I just really respect it. And I really, really like it. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but like, uh, she has some sort of like intuitive gift where she could call bullshit and just somehow mysteriously. Cool. Yeah. Like she was in the wrong place at the wrong time in Vegas. So she's on the run, uh, for her life, but somehow she becomes like this true detective bullshit, uh, bullshit caller. Like solving murders, accident, like in like serendipitously over a year uh, on the run in all of these small rural towns where, you know, they're kind of just, you know, known for one certain thing. Somebody dies. She happens to be there. I don't know if it's her breeding chaos or just literally in the right place at the right time. But that's basically her journey. Shout out to Peacock and shout out to per Poker Face. They film it in Orange County, New York. Get in on that because it's actually really awesome. And they should come to your town because they're oh. filming here. They're, it's a New York. It's a New York show. All right, I'm definitely willing to come. <laughs> At, do you guys have like? A, I know that the commission uh, for like the New York Film Commission uh, allows like a forty percent uh, disc like a uh, uh, credit tax uh, break. Yeah, yeah. D does is that in your region as well? It's uh, yeah, it's yeah. It's a huge perk. The like every single year when it comes up for a vote, everyone's like, make sure you call like your leaders and be like, this is a thing that needs to stay and that it's important to us. So absolutely, it affects us too. Because Georgia really, you know, kind of set the tone with filmmaking when they were pulling it or, or like uh, creating the commission down in Georgia, like not even 10 or 15 years ago that, you know, California started, like, tax gouging filmmakers because of all the money they made. But I feel like there isn't as much money in film as there used to be as like the materials become more accessible to everyone and everyone's making content. And like, it's a beautiful thing that there's so much art but actually to your small town mentality thing um, and like niche stories, I think it's interesting that like while I grew up like away from everyone else, I still like connect with the people I meet because we all like grew up on the same media, you know, like we all watched cable television and experienced the same shows. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how that changes with um, like subscription based platforms like there's the people that grew up with netflix there's going to be the people that grew up with hbo there's the like there's going to be i don't know it's going to be interesting to see you can't like walk up to a random person and be like remember when we watched that's so raven because like not everyone's oh going my to god watch, yeah. like all the same raven. things i do i remember that's so raven uh when we were kids yeah. and uh <laughs> that, that was like right around like my sister watched it and clarissa explains it all uh, on Nickelodeon, the sh little niche shows like that. Uh, were you more of like a '90s kid or just like uh, pre uh, pre uh, 2000s? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> a '90s kid, I, I guess. Well, I, you, I, I'm a '90s kid, de definitely. Like, uh, I was it, born in the '90s, but like, you're all right. So you're you're still a millennial, right? Yeah. Gotcha. So a 90s kid is basically like um, we remember, like to your point where we were connected through a lot of shows before the Internet, like way before the Internet. Definitely a 90s big deal kid. to get on AOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like on um, get having your own screen name and uh, get Heather like eight uh, New York. That was my first one. <laughs> I was Yankee, I was Yankees young <laughs> And my neighbor came up with that because she signed me up for uh, my own screen name. And I, that was weird. I never signed up for social media ever. It was always like, oh, it was always a girl getting me in trouble. Somebody signed me up for MySpace. I remember that. Somebody signed me up for Facebook. I remember that. I Instagram. Was I went to Facebook thing. kicking and screaming. I loved MySpace and how you could like design your space. Like it was like stepping into someone's world. They had like the background, they created the song they wanted, all the icons to display their personality. And I'm like, Facebook just made everyone the same and that was boring to me and, and eventually there was no one left on my space and I was like okay I, I follow the guy I follow Tom on Instagram and he's like traveling the world right now good for him yeah I'm waiting for his movie to be honest because social network with the founding of Facebook okay it was cool 
you know, like, what about Tom? Like this guy, yeah. this guy, this, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> see we might know that but everybody else right now they might not know that so right, okay right. 90s we understand that because it was like day one spawn <laughs> uh tom if you're listening please like you got it we got it we got to talk buddy like i know you're loving life uh your beautiful girlfriend and probably like on an island outside of Taiwan, Taiwan that doesn't really exist to the public. Uh, but please, we want to know your story, bro. Because <laughs> he's a very mysterious guy. He's everybody's friend, but you know, it's just like I know, like I, I just know nothing about the guy. <laughs> it was always a fun move to put Tom as your number one friend when like your friends were fighting about it. Like, oh, your you know top who eight. My best friend is Tom. <laughs> yeah. And he was, he was everybody's first friend, uh, which was really freaking cool. Uh, but yeah, it got really, it got really bad because it was such a space for cat getting catfish. And it's like, yeah. I, and me, I'm barely like 17, 18 years old. Uh, we didn't call it catfishing back then. Uh, I, at least, I don't know if it had a name, but it became such a common thing where it's just like, it's yo, like memes. memes used to be called icons. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they were, yes. They were called icons. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I got like, oh God, I, no, we're not going to talk about catfishing on the show. <laughs> if, but if you are a catfisher person, stop, please stop. That's just mean. You're spying on somebody and you're going to hurt their feelings. That's not cool, dude. <laughs> and it's probably a dude. X. Uh, but no, we got a lot of things that I think just sort of like evolved. You don't have to catfish anybody anymore on social media that much. You just go do it on Tinder or something <laughs> like that. And it's just like, yeah. Oh, by the way, now nah, we're just not, never going to meet. And I'm really glad they did the the little check mark where it's just like, oh, I, oh not yeah. a catfish, not a catfish. OK, so th there's a level of, I guess, legitimacy and comfortability where we learn from MySpace. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I haven't done the Instagram verification thing. I tried to do it. I don't know if it did work, but they said I didn't have enough followers followers to be verified yet. And all it is, is just like your license. And it's just yeah. like, I'm like, what do you mean? You're not going to verify me. This is my license. We're like, what, what the fuck? Part of me is like, I don't want to be famous. If there was a way to act forever without being known, I would do that. <laughs> well, uh, you're, you're into the science of stuff. What about just like, you know, exploring more with like, uh, special effects and makeup? I'm not that into editing. I can't sit in front of a computer too long. No, 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 not, not like, not like, uh, sound effects or anything like that, but, uh, the special effects, that's more of like, uh, the process and even the science of, uh, of making masks or making, uh, making blood or like those type of effects where you're actually creating. I wouldn't mind doing something like that. It would probably be really fun. I just wonder how well I can relate to a character when it doesn't feel like me. Kind of like, I, I definitely go like full method when I act. Like I feel like it's definitely not healthy and West End Girls specifically showed me how not healthy that is. And it's like discouraged, right? I don't know if I don't go method, I feel like I'm only giving like 95%. Um, oh, so you go, you go, you do a deep dive. I become the person that I'm portraying. Um, I don't have to like carry it outside of like action. Like while we're rolling, like I am that person, but I don't have to like, like only talk to me as if I'm this character. I'm not like that into it. So you're not Daniel Day-Lewis. But for example, like doing West End Girls, I started having nightmares that like, like I am a very straight human but I was having like lesbian killer nightmares where like, like it felt very rapey and I'm like, I don't want this. And <laughs> I'm just like, wow, that character really stuck to me and I didn't like it. Like I fully understand how the Joker killed Heath Ledger at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's very possible. So you feel, did you feel like you overstepped or it's just like uh, you or you found sort of like your uh, boundary? Not really. It just, made me really question the types of roles I wanted to take on because of how I go about them. It's like, I, it wasn't like detrimental. It just meant I have some nightmares that kind of made me go, Oh, but yeah. yeah. So how'd you get out of it? Did you take on a new character to kind of break that, break that cycle? Just mindfulness. I think just staying in the present. It's the same way 
I get over trauma, I guess. I'm like, well, let's not think about that. Let's stay busy. What are we working on today? <laughs> I prefer alcohol, but that's fine. <laughs> that's most people. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's nothing there's nothing special about me, dude. Um, I'm a dime a dozen. And other than starting a nonprofit, that's the only thing that's unique about me. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, what else we got here? Let's there's uh, a lot I can say about that. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I didn't want to I didn't want to like, like like take the conversation next level where it's just like, oh Phil, please tell me more. No, I that was, that was just me being stupid. Sorry, guys. I know. <laughs> This is probably this is probably like our fiftieth podcast by now. So, uh, I, I I don't even know where I was going with this, but it's like uh, people know me well enough to actually like you know like uh, you know stay involved, especially with the club because we do we want to get to work and we do want to create some you know awesome shit. And uh, I think it's really only a matter of time. But uh, you ever like? Uh, you ever like uh, judge yourself to the point where, you know, you could have done something better, especially in a performance and maybe it's just hard for you to just oh, let it for go. Sure. That's what I hate about when productions take a really long time in post to come out. Cause it'll be like two years later. And then I'll be like, I have grown so much since then. <laughs> like, I don't even want to share this with people. I'm like, I really liked it then, but now I'm like, Oh, I wasn't focusing on voice work at the time. And now I'm like, Oh, I wish I inflected differently or, like it yeah i definitely can see things like that i do I, I i get that way a lot um at least like uh not so like i haven't really seen anything two years later like that it took that long the turnover was decent whether it's a student film where they have to hit a deadline but uh even with the independent stuff i just realized there's so much more that you know i could have done or did i make the mistake of not really preparing for you know the uh the reshoot that maybe I should just, you know, uh, not just be selective because I don't really change up my look or anything like that too much for a character. Like as a guy, uh, I look the same and almost unfortunately look the same in almost everything I do. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I know it's just like um, I just like I only do because there's a lot of pieces of me that I can portray like. I just remember my hair was like maybe three inches longer uh, for the whole movie at one point. And uh, it was summertime and I thought, you know, we're, we're putting that one to bed, but we came back for a reshoot and I'm like, um, it's a little bit shorter than this, where it's like, you know, the day after I got the haircut, I find out, you Classic. know, that happened and, to me with a lot of hair changes. People would be like, that's a wrap. And then I'd be like, cool, I can change my hair again. And then they'd be like, actually, you need a wig because we're reshooting a lot. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh. I, not to nitpick because like like uh, those are the things like, you know, that sometimes, you know, I think maybe sometimes as a responsible actor, you got to like be cautious of how you really like you got to preserve your look until you I don't That's know. I'm stuck with blonde for a while. I'm like, I seem to be like up and coming and I'm getting gig after gig and like I can't even change it without like there's always some continuity error. Like one thing wraps. I'm still working on something else. So I'm like, I guess I'm blonde for a while. <laughs> Maybe it's like, is it really our responsibility? Like, it's nice to actually, you know, be that, have that level of responsibility, but can you really blame us more or less for not being prepared for the follow-up or the reshoot or whatever? Oh, no. If it was unexpected, that's entirely the call of leadership. Like, if they told you you're good and then they're not good, like, sorry, yeah. life happens. I'm actually, and I only talk, brought that up because I'm learning from those mistakes because now I'm the guy writing the checks. You know what I mean? Like, oh, for sure. I just, uh, I just <sighs> corrected my first thing. Um, I'm actually getting the footage for it tomorrow, but uh, I feel that I ran a really good set, and it entirely comes from a place of this is what I hated dealing with when I was up and coming. So I made sure that I had like the schedule on lock. The crafty on lock like I had all of the scenes set up I like made sure that my team was people who have done it before that are more experienced than me because it was my first production and I'm like I'm going to invest into paying people that are better than me because like I don't want like I want to be the worst person in the room because like I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> so like I want to well, make sure that everyone else knows what they're doing so that it doesn't look bad. <laughs> no, that's actually, and that's intelligent. Like you want to actually surround yourself with people who really do know their shit, you know, and it, it'll actually make it so much easier. You don't have to be the boss just because you're in charge, you know? Right. 
you want to de- like, I like delegating. It's not that easy, but if there is somebody with a skill, just delegate, you know, and just give yourself, give yourself a break, you know, even as There's a like, um, Another thing that made it difficult is, um, I did have someone else direct one of the scenes because I was also like, I was doing it for my reel. So I'm like the lead actor in it because like, I want to, to, I feel like the roles that I've gotten haven't fully showcased what I'm capable of. So I wanted to put a few scenes out there that were inspired by other things that I've seen and relate to where I'm like, and this is something I can do to advertise to casting directors. But um, there was one that just required a lot of movement. It was a restaurant scene. There was a lot of timing involved with like choreography and like people hitting their marks. And I'm like, this is going to be a lot to organize. I want eyes behind the camera, but like I have to be on cam, like I'm on screen. So it's going to be hard for me to be in that place, deliver what I need to and run the show. So I got one of the top people in Buffalo who like crushes the 48 and like constantly puts out like really amazing stuff. And Yeah. And yeah. this is just for your reel? Yeah, I got Andy that's, Richards' name to yeah. direct it. But and then that's, like, you know, I, I paid a cinematographer. It wasn't like a collab, you know. I was like, if I want something good, I need to invest in it. I'm not just gonna ask favors and have things fall through, you know. Good move. You know, like especially when you get to a certain point. Um, and and if you have the money uh not oh yes buy tesla stock but don't forget to actually pay your cinematographer <laughs> oh, absolutely. and it honestly people like, want to give you their best because they appreciate it you know they're going to call you six months from now on the next project because you're the last thing on their mind you know you've actually worked together he's going to do you a solid you know that's <laughs> honestly and i think that's i think that's how it works like yeah, you got to ask for favors once in a while, but you know, don't, you just don't take advantage of people, you know. And uh, useful. like a great, like I naturally am a helper. So like, if I see someone struggling, I'm like, how can I help? Because like, <laughs> you're stressing me out, and I need to <laughs> fix this. So, and then like people appreciate that, and they're like, wow, this person like impacted me, and I'm going to think of them when I need to like recommend someone or I have something fall through like and I need someone last minute like I know you're dependable you know so like these roles that you put together on the reel like uh what were you trying to what were you trying to highlight about yourself so remember how I said I've been compared to Jennifer Lawrence she's actually one of my biggest inspirations what I love about her is her transitions like she can in one take go from happy to realization to like manic crying and I just I'm like "Mm." (laughs) <laughs> so oh, silver, silver linings playbook was your ba- like you like that movie that is exactly what i based one of my scenes off of for my reel it's uh the uh, restaurant I, scene where she freaks the fuck out <laughs> so yeah and the guy's just like did you have to get a scene partner for that or is it just on I you i did that uh, i actually recasted that one several times that was the one i was most nervous about because i was like this is an important role i need someone that i can feed off of i need like someone good and like every person that like I knew personally just like kept falling through. Like, I'm like, I know that you're, you can do this. And then they'd be like, I can't anymore. And then the next person, same thing. And it came to like three days before shooting and like someone referred to someone. We had a few zoom calls. And the first time I was like, this isn't exactly what I want. So I like gave him the feedback. I was like, this is my constructive criticism, like work on these things. And then our next call, he crushed it. And I was like, this guy's teachable. I can work with this. So okay. shout out to Harold. He saved me. <laughs> <laughs> so you did the whole, you did the tea, you did the raisin brand, the entire, you did the whole scene. Yeah. Yeah. I nice. mean, it's, it's not that scene. It was rewritten. Um, it was very, it, it's, it's you own unique scene, but knowing that that was the inspiration, you can probably connect the dots of like, Oh, that's the moment when. Oh, so you, it's more, it was more of an adaptation yeah yeah gotcha all Um, right cool it's about um she's like mad that he's flirting with the waitress and there becomes like this whole argument over peach cobbler and they start using like the word peach cobbler to mean like fucking someone (laughs) so So, all right so you you actually invented your own little scene but you actually just honestly just had like a a fundamental vibe i knew the feelings i wanted to convey and what i wanted to put the character through and then i was like well how can we get there So, so you created a little comedy 
Kind of, yeah. He not <laughs> deliberately, so but it ends like, up being a fight over like the waitress, and then at the end, the waitress is on my side, and she's like, "Here's your peach cobbler," and then smashes it in his face. No. <laughs> so like I'm crying, and then I'm like laugh crying, and then. <laughs> so you you put in some dynamics, you put in the work, and you There's wrote a lot the of a lot of this, <laughs> but so I love you, it. Did you make so a short my baby? So even though you did it, did you do it intentionally for a reel or maybe does it qualify as a tiny snippet of a short, short film? Both. Um, I was like, this is going to be for a reel, but it's one full scene that tells a story. So it can definitely, I imagine, like, I don't know for sure, but I think it's going to run maybe 20 minutes. So I'm like, that's 20 minutes after everything's said and done. I think so. God, what kind of peach cobbler do they serve there? What, I mean, like, yo, 20 minutes. There's like the mood setting. There's the conversation before it when like tensions building and the little like side eyes and the, I think I know what these characters are feeling, but I'm not sure. And then it like builds and then there's the was it, when, was it there at the table or did, like walking from the car or just like leaving? It's at the table. It starts with like her and her thoughts and he comes back from the bathroom and she's like trying to like bring up like where they're going next in the relationship and why she hasn't like made certain moves in her career because she's like well it's about us and then rather than paying attention to her he starts like flirting with the waitress so she's just like you know <laughs> are we talking bradley cooper in uh silver linings type of uh flirting where it's like that kind of oblivious i wouldn't say that kind of flirting but that kind of like i don't understand what your problem is like i'm just a guy like <laughs> It seems like, I don't know, you guys were definitely, it seems like these two characters must have been dating for quite some time to be at that level. Yeah, of she's sick of his shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, and now you're starting to nitpick at all of his stuff. And now it's like, you know what, let's see if he actually understands what I'm trying to say. And I'll, we'll, we'll do a test right here. Peach mm -hmm. cobbler. Yep. This yep. is actually, wow, that's actually really a good idea. I hope somebody actually gets inspired to make their own stuff and stop wasting your time. Honestly, like, don't just work to pay the rent, you know, be That's creative. Entirely my attitude, like so often I've just had things not go the way I want. And rather than throw a fit about it, I'm like, I'll do it myself. <laughs> you ever have a, like a, I guess sort of like a, a bucket list of type of movie you want to do? I mean, fantasy is the pinnacle, but like, I want to emphasize that like my passion is acting. I feel like I don't want to direct, but I had to out of necessity. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But yeah, like Game of Thrones type things. I was very inspired by Amelia Clark for sure. Loved her work in Game of Thrones. Um, she cried a lot. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, anyway, not so much in the end. <laughs> it was more like a hate. It, it like was a lot of, like again, like, I don't know. Love is motivating. It's like she had to experience a lot of hurt to get to where she was, you know? So do you ever want to like do something similar to that? Like maybe uh, if not create your own kind, but maybe like, would that be like an ideal uh, role for you to sort of like carry, not carry a series, but you know what I mean? As like, you know, that you can do I would love to be a series regular for a fantasy. Yeah, because you know that you could handle the job. And you know your quality. Like you know that I, you I love Collins so much because he gave me like exactly what I was looking for, just on an indie level. And like I would love for Paladin to get picked up. He's talked about like what we would do if we got a budget. And what he like we would probably reshoot season one, but like there's a lot there's a lot more we can do than what currently exists. And I feel like it's really good as it is, but. So it's like get the right, get a bigger budget where you could actually have the appropriate set to actually create the atmosphere is what you guys probably just wanted to do is upgrade it. Yeah, I think this one was made on about 10,000. And that ain't, I mean, that's not nothing. You can make a decent, right. like you can make a lot of decent things with 10 grand. I find the costuming very impressive. That's definitely like, I think Pat did a lot of the costuming. There's a whole wardrobe department, but he was the one doing like the 3D printing. He did a lot of like the weapons. He did the research of like, this is what should be done. Um, he was uh, also a cinematographer. So I'm a, I'm a 3D printing fanatic myself. <laughs> no, I you should definitely check out Paladin. It's a very cute story. For my sunglasses. That's cool. Yeah, I got a, I got 3D printed stuff all around me. Like, I, <laughs> like even in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> my 
my badge folder for my Tesla ID is 3D printed. <laughs> oh, oh, that's actually no, that's smart. <laughs> Uh, my phone. Uh, it's like my... I'm breaking, and some engineer was like, "Oh, that's why I made this. Want me to print you one?" I'm like, "Please." <laughs> no, I mean that technology is really gonna, you know, it's only gonna do better. We'll probably see it on Mars. Shout out Elon. I know he's <laughs> you know, he's probably working right now. I'm gonna 3D print my house. I mean, <laughs> I have it like... with concrete. No, I mean like, uh, yes, I'm all for it, but uh, the prep work and the setup is nuts. Um, I build affordable cat condos. So I three, I 3D printed all the bricks where you assemble uh, the structures. So you could just, you could scale, you could scale a structure um, in any size brick in any size room. Um, theoretically, we could actually build a set with them, you know, or at least the walls of the set or the set. And like we could. That's mad cool. I've always wanted one of those, like just a warehouse type deal where you can like put some drywall up in between and be like, this is a bedroom. This is an office. And just like move Apple boxes around and, after the pandemic, there's space. Uh, I guess you just got to have the right uh, COI and the and a good landlord and you're good to go. For sure. Well, Heather, this was a beautiful conversation. Uh, before we wrap up, um, uh, we always try to like uh, end, end the show on a really, on a, on a notable note, uh, we've been doing what's called the right words at the right time. And it all started when I... Uh, uh, read this book called The Right Words at the Right Time, where it was a collective of just celebrities, athletes, written by Marcy Hopkins, doing these interviews and just showed the right words at the right time that just carried all these people through their entire career. So my curiosity was for you, Heather, has anybody ever given you the right words at the right time that's really gotten you through like the four better or worse, the through thick and thin or uh, not only to carry up to this point, did you perhaps just have words of wisdom of your own? I feel like I kind of already touched on it. I think the biggest thing that I lead by um, is what I was talking about, about like how I communicate with my teams and like anyone that I work with and that like there is no work person and home person. Like they're the same person. They affect one another. Like you have to make sure that you have to actually care about the people that you work with. Cause at the end of the day, like we, we have to take care of each other. Like, yes, we're here for a job, but also we're humans and we're going to work better together if we actually have a relationship of some sort. You're right. I just, I treat everyone as family. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Literally. nice. laughs> oh, that you're, you are a sweetheart. And I think you're a hidden gem. Like you actually do nice things for people. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of I think I said maybe at the beginning it's like you found me I was like thanks for finding me I'm like I kind of feel that way I'm like I don't know like like so, what I was saying with like the verification thing I'm like I'm not sure I want to be discovered <laughs> I want to be the secret you know <laughs> that's actually that actually does sound like a really good uh a uh, possible like short film right there. If you call yourself the secret and put like yourself into like a, uh, you know, it, you already have the skill. You've, you've proven it to yourself that you could do this yourself, you know, and uh, you definitely know what you want, what you're capable of, and you have a motive and a reason to do it and bless your heart. You're actually including the people who are good at doing their shit. They're never going to forget that. Oh, for sure. I have a great experience working with someone like honestly, one of the hardest things for me has been realizing that not everyone wants to grow with me. There are people that like I've had a great experience working with, but they just, they want to stay there. And I'm like, but I got this great opportunity. Let's go. And they're like, nah, that, that breaks my heart a little bit. It's like, I can make people better or at least my idea of better. It's probably not their idea of better, you know? But it's <laughs> like, so you're asking people to trust you basically. <laughs> I, I have people's best interest in mind. Sometimes I'm wrong about what they want. Sometimes they're wrong about what they want. They're like, <laughs> I don't know what's best for me. Like, well, maybe you should figure that out and I'll help you get there. <laughs> there's, and there's always the reshoots, you know, yeah, right. you'll figure, you know, you'll figure it out. <laughs> for sure. Improvise, adapt, overcome. That's in my Facebook bio, I think. No, those are the right, <laughs> those are the right words improvise and overcome what was the other what was it improvise adapt overcome 
someone described me as that once. And I'm like, that is entirely how I live. <laughs> Those are definitely the right words at the right time. Improvise, adapt, overcome. It's very Tesla. Like, is it, did they take that or is that sort of like your quote? It comes from a movie, I think. Like when someone said that that's how I am, I think they were quoting something. I don't know where it comes from. We could probably Google it. But uh, I actually think it might be a Marine thing. I think the Marines say that. But uh, They say a lot of things. When I started Tesla, it was kind of described to me as Tesla's like the military. They're going to tell you to dig a hole over here. And then they'll, someone will come by and be like, why is there a hole here, soldier? Fill this hole in. I need a hole over there. And someone will be like, why is there no dirt in my hole? And like, you feel it's like nice you're doing things that. over and over and over. Because it's very much a place of action. And like sometimes... Back. Sometimes it sets you back because you're not fully prepared, but also it's our strength because like a lot of places will never change. Like it's been 20 years, they've had the same problems and like people feel stuck, you know? So yeah. at least Tesla isn't that. Like they're not afraid to make a mistake and start over, do it again. Sometimes it's exhausting, but it's also, I don't know. It's how you actually get things done. Sometimes you don't need to make sure you have the answer when you start. You just have to do something and figure it out, you know? Yeah, you got to adapt. Someone else said, uh, we got the plane flying. Now we need to figure out how to land it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, what if we turn off the wind? <laughs> yeah. No, don't, no, 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 no. Pull on the string, maybe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's kind of how I live. I don't always have exactly how to do things, but I know that with the right people around me, I can figure it out. Heather, you're incredible. And, you know, honestly, I, I really hope we stay in touch. I would love Absolutely. to work. With you I was actually going to ask, like, I pretty much only found you through backstage. Like, where do I follow Astoria Filmmakers Club? Yo, bro, we are on Facebook. We got it. We got we're like 900 strong now. Uh, we have our own website. We, we got we're listed on the New York uh, charities bureau like we're like uh, too Aww. legit. We're too legit to quit. Wait, what uh, charities are you passionate about? Me, Phil? Oh. Uh, like, both. Like, the Astoria Filmmakers Club is the charity, but it's more like it's more than that. You know, it's a very strong community where we provide up and coming more or less like we can, we have the ability to provide every single build your own grant to any form of the independent film industry, if not even like uh, outside the independent film industry. That's amazing. That, that's that's what it is capable of doing. It's a very powerful machine. But it's more like it's so much more than that. Like you got the workshops, uh, you got you got the networking events. We have a film festival like it's growing. It, it really is. But we create our like ideally we want to create original story. And we've been doing the last three months. We've been doing a lot of readings on prep work on what we're going to do over the summer. But like it's not limited to just that since there's a thousand of us almost over 900. We could just like uh, just share what people are doing, help with fundraising or raise money for their project it's like that that's my big this is my i guess my baby for lack of a better word my charity but uh other charities like i grew up in church my whole life i donate um uh, i beg i i beg for food so i i'm a charity case myself <laughs> and no no i'm i'm just kidding uh i have a dog i created my own uh, i have a I, i've always had cats and pets but i have my own baby girl right now so the affordable cat condo thing that's a charity on that i literally did so i don't know i'm um i got sleeping on her uh her little pedestal over there as we speak in the window oh you got a short hair or a mancoon or um i don't know how to describe her probably closest is just like a regular like brown tabby um oh. All she right. has like a really small circular face with so small ears, like with those with that weird face, like she this. She definitely has like a unique look. No, she's not like a dwarf cat or anything, but I don't. She just looks like a baby. I don't know. <laughs> put, all right, put her on your website and look. I have a cat. That's the only thing. Definitely I didn't on see. my Instagram. <laughs> right. So if people wanted to follow you, or you know, even though you're a secret, if they wanted to potentially say hi. I like you. I like to talk to you about a potential project. Where could they find you? Now, this is why I like to be a secret is I'm very interactive. So it's like more people means a lot more work. But no, for real, I love connecting. I love relationship building. Um, so you can find me on animated.hello. That's my Instagram. Most of my handles are some flavor of animated hello. 
that's actually kind of a mockery name of like putting on a face I'm like huh my hello is animated but uh that was actually the first AOL screen name that I came up with myself and then I found that it translated really well to the film world so I just kept that yeah I let go of Yankees Young in a long time ago yeah, Heather Eight New York was the one my mom came up with and I'm like that I'm like I don't want to be associated with having a food problem <laughs> is your cat called Cleopatra yes oh she's adorable she's regal oh <laughs> Uh, all right. So we have so much in common other than films. And I guess we're going to have to do a Absolutely. podcast part two. Aww. So I'd love to stay in touch for sure. You definitely will. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I always leave uh, uh, all of our guests uh, with these words of wisdom of my own is to always remember, uh, never forget community, creativity, and always find the joy in everything you do and take that with you everywhere you go. Bless. Namaste. Have a great day. Thank you. You as well. Thanks so much for having me. Ciao for now. Pleasure.